uh, uh, I supervised a number of people. Okay. It's, it was a relatively small school. Uh -huh. First there were about 300, but it grew mm -hmm. during the seven years I was there. Okay. And the interesting thing is that I was not only the high school principal, I did everything possible. And this was my first experience with being uh, treated negatively mm -hmm. at the point where I wanted to be treated positively. After five years uh, as principal of this school, the town grew and we built a new school. And during that process, I was the person who did everything in terms of working with the construction people to build that school. I mean everything. When I was a teacher, I coached, in addition to teaching, basketball and, and uh, baseball. But when they decided to build a school, they made me the clerk of the work and that is a position unto itself in, in a large construction thing. And the interesting thing is, I ran the school as principal and I did everything for 24 hours uh, to make sure that everything was on time and do, do what that person is supposed to do. Okay, so you, now, you, you were an integral part of the, the construction? Also, I, I, I was, yes, I was head of the construction huh. to make sure that everything went well. Right. And I reported to the school board. Okay. Everything. That person is called a clerk of the work. Mm -hmm. And that position is still uh, used whenever they build anything like, like that. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> prior to the opening of that school, uh, because the town grew, we had to, they had to select a superintendent. See, the, the state provided a superintendent of school for small towns in Connecticut. And I was so sure that I was going to get that position because I was really the only top educator in the entire town. Mm -hmm. But that's when the invisible ceiling came about. After I thought perhaps I was going to get it, I did not get it. Right. They hired a person uh, other than myself, not uh, anyone who was in town, but they reached out. And I felt that I had been neglect neglected. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a letter to the late Senator Dodd, and uh, <clears throat> that's in my book also. Right. Uh, not complaining, but simply telling him the facts. And over a hundred newspapers picked it up. Wow. And then I got offers all over the country. Okay. So I decided to leave Lebanon. And that was the reason that I left. But I realized for the first time that uh, even when you've done a great job and you've worked hard, as a black man, there is an invisible ceiling, and that's very unfortunate. But anyway, to move along quickly, that experience taught me a lot. But at the same time, in spite of what was happening, I continued to love rather than to hate. Uh -huh. And I feel that way today because uh, my, my experience is that God is love and, and, and I respect that so much. So that's what happened in Lebanon, Connecticut, but then there were a number of other experiences and I've had some great experiences as principal of schools, high schools and elementary schools. Right. So uh, that's pretty much what that was all about. Okay, on that, really on the same, same note, uh, what year was that experience that you had, the heart of that of the experience in school? What year was that? That was in the 70s. In the 70s? Yes. Okay. And today, 
uh, and I believe it's relevant to ask you this question. Um, uh, matter of fact, I think it's, um, it's probably uh, right in line. Uh, same subject matter. It's 50, approximately 50 years since Dr. King died. We just re-elected right. um, President Barack Obama. Right. And we still have a long way to go. There's a lot of, lot of conversation, uh, a lot of rhetoric going, going on at this moment. Right. What is your connection mentally? How does that all connect, come together for you? Um, what you went through, what you experienced personally, uh, Dr. King's existence, and 50 years later, here we have this president uh, experiencing turmoil in the country. Right. First, I want to say I never thought I would live long enough to see a black president in the United States, and I'm so proud of that. Mm. Yes. But the whole process of being a part of Martin Luther King's program mm -hmm. helped me so very, very much. Because no matter where I was principal, and I was principal of seven different schools through the years. Okay. The experience of walking with King was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Because I realized uh, that uh, in order to really make it, it was going to be necessary to follow the things that Dr. Martin Luther King talked about and wanted and really died about because uh, he was right. And I say in my book, uh, he not only helped black people, he helped white people because his whole movement was always religiously based and he taught us not to hate even in the worst moments that he had and there were many right so I learn from from those experiences and I look forward to continuing to speak at his birthday wherever I spoke in Chicago uh, Martin Luther King's birthday and I want to do that every year because he was truly my idol. Okay. Yes. So how do you feel about our president today? I think that Barack is the man. I think he has, has it all. He's able to communicate. He's brilliant. He's had the training. And he can deal with all sorts of experiences. He is truly in the right place, and I thank God for that. Do you, you believe that he can, in other words, it sounds to me, but I'm not going to take it for granted, that he has the ability to live up to the legacy? Oh, yes. Fifty years later? Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Okay. He f followed Dr. King's dream, and he continues to follow it. And he has the personality and the intelligence to really follow through and carry it out. And I thank God he's in his second term. Um, and I'm sure he's going to do a wonderful job, just as he did in his first term. Yes. And I was in Addison, Alabama as a young soldier, having left Hartford, Connecticut, no orientation, and I was actually petrified uh, because I look at the signs, white and black, but I couldn't understand why those signs were there. And therefore, uh, I refused any opportunity, any opportunity to, to, to go into town. I went into Aniston only when I had to. And I, I, I could not imagine that I'm being trained to fight the enemy, Japanese and the Germans. And I felt that the enemy is right around me now. I couldn't walk on some streets 
after six o'clock in the evening as a black person in Anniston, Alabama. And to me, that was the reason for that particular chapter. And I explain it in that chapter pretty much. Okay. Oh, Doc, what is, uh, what is the Dodd effect? Senator Dodd is the person that I wrote. Oh, that you spoke about. Uh, right. Yes. Uh -huh. I mentioned that. Right. And, and uh, because he was so affected by my letter, mm -hmm. he submitted my letter to the United States Congressional Record. Mm -hmm. And it's still in there. Uh, because he too felt that it was a disgrace uh, the kind of thing that I had gone through after having built, uh, really built, they call it the high school I built, and and it really was. Mm -hmm. In fact, they invited me back uh, uh, four years ago and honored me at that particular school. So uh, that was the dot effect. How do you define moving in a, in a new direction? Well. Because there were so many uh, situations that I worked to improve, especially when I became when I came to Florida as an area superintendent. My fundamental job was to uh, desegregate schools, and it was a period of time when whites and blacks came together and of course during that time um, it, it, it a lot of people looked at me as if I were from Mars because I was determined that the law says desegregate but many white principles were not about to desegregate but my job was to make sure that they did desegregate. I was uh, responsible for 24 schools here in Palm Beach County. And I made sure that the ch black children who entered the white schools were able to participate in all of the activities, not just go and sit in class. Right. And many of them had difficulties uh, participating in uh, adjusting to that right right mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I actually because the principals report re reported to me I actually fired a couple of principals who refused to permit students to become part of the activities for an example the swimming team um, had a big meet that they were supposed to participate in. Right. And the swimming pool at the particular school uh, was broken. And so the, the head of the swimming uh, team went to a home so they could practice before the meet. Right. And the, there was one person, black person on that team and he was not permitted to enter that home to participate in their swimming pool. And I dealt with that. That's just one example, but there are many other, there are many other examples.